When we get a new phone or computer, it usually comes with an operating system pre-installed on it already. But when we get a Raspberry Pi, it's a little bit different. It doesn't come with a hard drive or an operating system already on it. So we have to use an SD card as its hard drive and we have to install an operating system onto this before we can use the Pi. For this lesson, we're gonna need a Raspberry Pi and its power supply and an SD card that's at least eight gigabytes in size. Let's start by opening up a web browser and going to raspberrypi.org. And then we'll click on the downloads tab. If we scroll to the bottom of the page, we can see a list of some of the operating systems that we can download for the Raspberry Pi. Most of these are Linux distributions, but there's even a Windows distribution for the Raspberry Pi. This is just a small list of all the operating systems we can download. But the one we really care about is the one at the top here, the Raspbian image. It is the official operating system and it's the recommended one for most use cases for the Pi. If we click on that, we actually have three options for this image. We want to download the light version. So just click on the download zip button here. The desktop versions come with a full graphical desktop environment, kind of like what we see here on my laptop where we could browse the web or play games or even watch videos. But for our purposes, where we're just gonna be running JavaScript on the Raspberry Pi to interact with sensors, the light version will be more than enough. The light version, it's much better for the types of projects that we'll be working on, where we don't wanna plug in a keyboard and a monitor directly into the Pi. We wanna write code on our laptops and then transfer that code over to the Pi and run it remotely. This download can take a little while. So while that's happening, let's go and download another piece of software that we'll need. Uh, we need to go to balena.io slash etcher and install it for your current operating system. I'm on a Mac, so I'm gonna download for Mac OS. This application will help us to get the operating system onto the SD card with minimal effort. These two downloads might take a little while to happen, so go get yourself a coffee, and when you come back, we'll set up this operating system on the SD card. So hopefully everything finished downloading and we can set up the SD card. Once these have finished downloading, click on the Etcher image and install it for your operating system. On a Mac, this just means dragging it into my applications directory. Now go and open up the Etcher application. Once this opens, it's gonna give you an option to select an image. So click on that button and then select the Raspbian light image that we just downloaded. Now we need to select the drive to install this onto. This is gonna be the SD card that we're gonna end up plugging into the Raspberry Pi. So before we can continue, we need to plug the SD card into our computer. You may need an SD card adapter for your laptop. So plug that in and then plug in the SD card. Once you do that, you should be able to select the SD card from your drives. This is my 16 gigabyte SD card that I just plugged in. Make sure you select the right drive for this because everything that's currently on the SD card will get replaced with this operating system. So click continue and then click flash. So I'll ask you for your password. And then it will start to put the image onto the SD card. This can take a couple of minutes, so it might be nice for another coffee break time. Etcher just finished flashing my SD card, so I can unplug that from my computer now. I'm actually gonna plug my Raspberry Pi into my monitor and keyboard behind me to test that everything was successful with the SD card. Now, if you don't have a monitor and keyboard, don't worry, you don't have to follow along with the next step. In the next video, we're gonna learn how to do everything wirelessly. I just wanna show you what it looks like when we plug in our Pi for the first time. So to start, I need to take the micro SD card out of the adapter and plug it into the Pi. Then I'm gonna plug in the HDMI cable for my monitor and the USB dongle for my keyboard. Once those are all plugged in, I can connect my Raspberry Pi to the power supply. And now we should be able to see my Raspberry Pi start up on my monitor over here. It's gonna go through the initial configuration and then it should launch into a terminal environment where I can start typing in bash commands. So I can log into the Pi using the default user 
pi and the default password, raspberry. Now I'm in and I can use my Raspberry Pi just like I would use any other Linux operating system. So I can clear the console. I can check my current working directory. I can change directories. I can type in echo commands. I can use the nano text editor to create a new file. So at this point, the Raspberry Pi is set up and I can plug it into a keyboard and monitor and just start using it like a normal Linux machine. However, without being connected to the internet or any other sensors, it's not really powerful right now. So in the next video, we're gonna learn how to connect this to the Wi-Fi and then control the Pi remotely rather than having to plug in a keyboard.